Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in, this, uh, in this video I will explain uh, the, uh, my wind vane that I use. I was asked to explain this a little bit, uh, how it works. So actually this is a, uh, will become a two-part uh, two series of videos uh, where in this uh, part one uh, I will explain everything uh, about, uh, about the wind vane, uh, what you can do there and how it works. And in the second part uh, we will go out and, and sail and I will uh, show you how to use it properly, uh, what, everything that's necessary to set it up and, and, and how to do it. So actually uh, this uh, type of uh, wind vane is called an auxiliary rudder system uh, and uh, that means that it has its own rudder. Uh, which is uh, big enough uh, to steer the boat itself, so there is no wiring set up to connect it to your main rudder or anything else here. So it's by itself the system which uh, completely uh, is, is uh, self-contained and, and, and steers the boat completely without everything else. So um, actually these auxiliary rudder systems are the most common types uh, today. There are various products uh, available on the market. This here, uh, it's called ProVane and uh, it's uh, fabricated in Estonia uh, by a very nice uh, forthcoming guy called Imre Alias. And uh, he will uh, make this product uh, exactly uh, that it, it fits perfectly to your boat because there are several uh, differences in boats uh, specifically uh, in terms of how to mount it to the boat uh, uh, the, the mounting brackets uh, it depends on your transom and your your setup of the boat so this boat here is uh, a Pelure Endurance 35 it's a full keel boat uh, 40 years old actually uh, it was built in 1983 and the design is a Peter Eibold design from uh, 1977. So it's a really reliable, strong, robust uh, boat. And I sailed with this now uh, roughly about 9,000 nautical miles. I started this year in May in Croatia, in uh, the northern Adriatic Sea. I went through the whole Mediterranean, through the Strait of Gibraltar and then uh, headed north. Uh, up to Ireland where I had a short stop then I continued further to uh, the Outer Hebrides in uh, Scotland uh, with a short stop again and then I crossed uh, over to uh, across the North Atlantic to Iceland where I traveled around a little bit uh, in Iceland to explore it a little bit and then I went back uh, directly from Iceland to Ireland again with a short break there and now I came uh, non-stop uh, non-stop again uh, uh, back um, um, from from Ireland here to Spain. I'm now here. The the town is called Barbate. Uh, it's uh, in South Spain, still in the Atlantic, and it's the last uh, the last town before uh, the Strait of Gibraltar. Uh, and currently, I'm a little bit stuck here because of. Uh, uh, strong easterly winds. It's it's called Levante. It's it's uh, a wind which is caused by high pressure system uh, on uh, on mainland Europe and and lower pressure in Africa. And uh, the problem is that uh, the only way to get through the Strait of Gibraltar is uh, by using the engine. And with these strong easterly winds, it's really tif uh, really difficult passage. Um, for the wind, for the waves, and also from uh, uh, currents that occur, so uh, the Strait of Gibraltar generally is, is a difficult passage uh, with a small boat like this, and I'm alone, so there's nobody else. I can't uh, uh, establish a, let's say, a watch schedule or something like that. I have to go through uh, through it directly, and. Um, well, yes, uh, it's it's uh, it's a challenging task to go there. So I wait here a little bit. Um, it's a pretty nice weather, as you can see, uh, although it's late September. And uh, I'll use that to explain uh, this pro wing. So the pro wing itself, uh, as you can see, it's uh, uh, made from stainless steel. It's it's very rock solid, robust construction. Uh, it's uh, mounted with three points uh, on my transom and uh, that's uh, the mounting uh, of it is actually let's say a little bit tricky 
uh, as you can see here, it's not in the center. It's it's a little bit outside, so that's no problem. You can you can move it to the side somewhere, and it must not be centered. Uh, I put it a little bit outside to be able to use the ladder here uh, on the back of the boat to get into the water. So I moved it a little bit outside, and that's no problem. The mounting uh, itself, you will need uh, a second uh, a second person that uh, will help you out uh, mounting it because you have to drill holes and then. Uh, screw it uh, th through the transom and uh, what I can say is it's definitely a little bit tricky because it should be of course completely uh, vertical upright uh, with a little bit tilt uh, tilted a little bit because um, so you tilt it a little bit forward because as soon as the boat moves it, it will come out a little bit of the water uh, through the movement and then it will get uh, vertical uh, while, while the boat is moving and, and that's an important thing. So the rudder itself is about uh, 10 centimeters uh, out of the water like now we, I'm standing here in the port and uh, you will observe then uh, as soon as you you're sailing that uh, the boat gets steeper uh, back and, and the rudder will sink completely into the water and uh, that works really uh, really very good. However uh, when mounting it three uh, think think twice or three times before drilling the holes. I actually made uh, a slight mistake. I, it get a little bit well, <laughs> so I had to drill some more holes. Uh, so uh, my, my my advice is before you actually drill holes, think three times uh, if you're sure that everything is right, and then and then drill the holes. Uh, it could also be since this is a heavy, heavy, really heavy steel part. Uh, it, I think it's about 40 kilograms, and to find the right position, it's a little bit difficult because it's so heavy. So what I did is I put it on the boom lift that it doesn't fall down. I put it on the on the, on the boom lift, and and then I could, uh, let's say, move it around a little bit without holding the whole weight of it. Uh, it could also be an idea, probably, uh, to uh, to use instead of of this uh, uh, original construction, uh, to use a wooden pole, uh, which is far lighter, of course, than than you can find the right position. Finding the right position, so the the essence of it is that you mount it in such position that the wind vane, which comes up here, so that's uh, that's the wind vane. Uh, just let me show you that. So that's, that's the wind vane and uh, you put it then on top here and it will then move uh, into all directions uh, depending on your course. And uh, the essential thing of mounting it properly, uh, properly is that you mount it in such a way that the wind vane can move around everywhere uh, without touching something that, that you have on a boat. So in my in my uh, case that's almost true. So not perfectly. Uh, it, it touches a little bit here on my aft stay uh, if I have it in this position here. But it's just a little bit. Uh, so actually it's a little bit a mistake. It was my my mistake to mount it like this. I should uh, have put it a little bit more to the back. But it's actually no problem. So. Uh, before mounting it, really make sure that everything is correct in that position that it can freely move. It should be as close as possible to the boat, but of course as much back that it can move freely. And that's, that's really important that it does not, not get tangled somewhere. Okay, so um, about the pro vane itself, what what do we have here? So um, the the basic idea of a, of a of a uh, self steering unit is that um, that it works with pure force of the wind. So you have no electric uh, something here. It it works with the pure force of the wind, and that's actually vital if you do long passages such, such as I do. So it would be impossible for me to do all this with the electric uh, autopilot because uh, it simply would completely drain uh, my batteries. So, um, and this, it runs forever. So it needs no power, it runs forever. And, and that's a vital part for, for long, uh, long, distance, uh, long distance sailing. And uh, that's why I can really recommend if you plan to do long passages, uh, you should buy it 
from everything that I bought uh, for this boat. So I prepared it very well for this trip that I did, as I said, already 9,000 uh, nautical miles. Um, this was the most crucial, most essential part of everything that I bought in, in the preparation of, of this trip. Without this, it, it wouldn't have been possible. So there are um, some adjustments that, that, that you can make and, and I will uh, sh now show you what that is. So the first part is actually is, is the wind wane. It's, it's this part. It's a cloth and uh, it's a light aluminum, uh, aluminum frame uh, and it's, it's mounted here on top. So I have here, um, oops, uh, I have the, here this star nut on top. I can open this and I open this here and then you put uh, you put the wind vane uh, here on top there's only one way you, you can't put it wrong so it, it just fits in, in one direction so that's it now it's fixed here uh, when I go into a harbor uh, then usually I remove it uh, because it will take up some some wind force and it makes it more easy uh, for maneuvering, uh, maneuvering in in in, in the harbor, um, if if it's away, because the wind will always push here, uh, push or pull in some some direction. So uh, when coming in, I, I remove it, and then when I go out, I put it back out here. So that's the wind vane. Um, you can uh, the wind vane. You can rotate it a little bit, so backward or forward, and uh, you you use that. Uh, in case the boat heals, so uh, if, if you're set, let's say uh, say on, 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 on a beam reach, then it will uh, it will uh, point uh, to the side of the boat. And if the boat heals, uh, you can adjust this angle here so that the front side uh, is upright, and it should be upright uh, because uh, it it. Uh, uh, how to say uh, that the force which is uh, which is put on the wind vane is lowered a little bit if it, it definitely points upright and uh, you adjust it as soon as the pop, uh, as soon as the boat is healing a little bit then uh, you you can rotate this here that it's uh, upright again so the next thing is you have here this uh, star nut here on the side and with this I can fix it here so I can't rotate it anymore and if I lo uh, loosen this, you can see I can uh, rot this, uh, rotate this around. And that's uh, the angle, so you use that to adjust the angle to the wind. So the basic idea of it is that uh, when you're sailing, uh, you go on your desired course, and then you adjust it in such a way that the front side, which is here, that's the front side and that's the back side. So you adjust the front side such a way that it points directly into the wind, so that it uh, th that the airflow is in parallel to in parallel to the wind vane. And if uh, now if 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 the boat uh, uh, loses its course, then the wind vane uh, will uh, will will get the wind from the one or from the other side, and then it will will move. And I will immediately show that, and you will see that of course in the demonstration when I'm going uh, to sail out there. But first. I just like to explain all the, the mechanics and it, it's more easy to understand what, what to do while sailing. So in the moment it's, uh, it's locked here with a bolt here. So in the original version it comes with a star nut where you can unscrew it here but uh, it, it became tangled so I broke it. Um, uh, but that's not a problem so I have here as you can see a bolt here. And I remove this. take this out and now as you can see immediately it moves to either the one direction or the other other dependent on, on which which way the wind uh, in, in which way the wind wind blows them so the wind actually is coming now more or less from this direction here so dependent on, on which side I, I, I rotate it it moves back so to, to the one or to the other side let's say it like this so um, Back to how to mount it properly. As you can see, you have these counterweights here. That that's, uh, These counterweights uh, are used to get it upright with the, the force of gravity. 
so there's some weight in here that if if there is no pressure nothing else then it pulls down that it's getting upright of course here's the wind now so it so it moves uh, and by moving this actually uh, it moves the rudder so here below this here that's called the gearbox and the gearbox does nothing else than um, uh, moving, so so converting the force which which is generated by this wind vane to a turning of the rudder which is down there. So it, if it moves to one side, the, the rudder moves to the one side, and if it turns to the other side, the rudder turns to the other side, and by that it steers the boat. So the idea is basically you first uh, adjust this. Let's say we are we are on a beam reach then the wind is from the side, let's say from this side, this would be, this, this is what it would look like, okay? So, and as soon as, as the boat uh, loses uh, uh, the, the original course, let's say like this, then it will move into this direction. By this, it turns the boat back up to the right course, and as soon as it's at the right course, uh, the wind vane will, uh, will move in parallel and the boat will steer uh, in, in, in a straight line. And if it goes the other direction, then it will move in the other direction, will uh, turn the rudder again and, and steer the boat back to the course. So it, it always goes a little bit like this. So the perfect setup again, uh, while sailing, I will show you in the, in the second part of this video. So in, in the second episode. Uh, for now, let's uh, continue to explain this. So here below we have the gearbox, and as I said, the gearbox uh, does convert the force uh, which, which comes from the wind vane to turning the rudder. And what you have here down below is, uh, here I have in this case another, uh, another uh, star nut, which, which I can move uh, uh, fur further out and fur further in, like this. So I can open this here, and... I can move this further back, like this, for example. And this adjusts the rudder gain. So the elongation, the maximum elongation of, of the rudder will be greater as uh, if, if I move it further back, so further into the, into the uh, gearbox. So as you can see here, this is actually, so, so this is a, a tiller and that's uh, connected to the tiller and that's directly the, the rudder, more or less, below. As you can see, it moves now further, and if I take this star nut out again, so move it further out, like here, then you can see you have just a, a really small elongation of, of, of the rudder. So, and um, to set up, uh, to set this up right, so you have several parts, uh, se several, several things that you can adjust to uh, to work it properly uh, the first is you can you turn here and can uh, set let's say the angle of, of, of how far it's it's it, it looks forward or backward uh, you adjust this according to the heel of the boat so so it's not you know it's it's not so exact but let's say you roughly adjust it that it's it's more or less upright it's it's not so in detail exact the second thing is you can open this here and with this I can rotate the whole thing and with this actually I adjust the course so the course uh, that I want to steer um, so let's say if I'm close hold then then the wind is more or less from 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 the front <laughs> uh, then it will look like this if I'm on a beam reach then I have it like this and if I'm on a broad reach then I put it like this and if I'm running that downwind, I, I put it parallel to the back. So, th so that's roughly how you set up the course. And uh, the third thing is that you can adjust the, uh, the rudder gain here. So I usually start up with putting it into the middle and then, and then I fine, fine tune it and, and, and watch what, what the boat is doing, how it is steering. So let's say as a general rule of thumb, you can say, if the boat is fast, then you need only a little rudder gain so that it does not oversteer because you have uh, a, a strong water flow on the rudder. So you only need a little rudder gain that it moves only a little bit. And if the boat is slow, 
then of you of course um, need more rudder gain because you have just a weak flow of water on the rudder so you need more elongation of, of, of the rudder that it it's able to steer the boat properly and there is but so that's a general rule of thumb but there is no perfect you know put it like this and it will work you we will always have to uh, observe, uh, make a setup and then observe what the boat is doing. So you will see the conditions are different uh, depending on, on the waves and, and probably currents and everything else. How, how the sail setup is, are you in a reef setup or full full sails or, or whatever. It's it's every, every time it's a little bit different. So adjust all that and then play a little bit with the rudder gain and, and you will see um, um, uh, how you uh, which position is, is, is a good position that, that it works uh, as good as possible, which means uh, you, you want to have that the boat steers, let's say, a perfect straight line. You will never achieve that, but that's the basic goal. You want to have it steering as straight as possible. As you, as you will see, and, and that's the same for all types of, of uh, wind, uh, wind wanes, it's not just for this. Every wind wane, uh, uh, independently of which uh, 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 which product you use, they, they all work in the same technical, so the same, it's the same stuff there. And you will see that you have to find adjust that to, to, to find as, um, as good setup as possible. Well, so that's it uh, for, the first, uh, for the first part of it. Um, and uh, as soon as I get out here from this uh, from this uh, harbor here, uh, I will then uh, show you how to set up the sails and everything that is necessary to use this uh, under under real conditions. So, um, well, uh, what I uh, forgot to mention is, of course, uh, this product uh, can be bought. There is a homepage. Uh, it's you find you find it on the internet and. Uh, the link, of course, is in the description uh, below. Don't hesitate to contact Imre. Uh, and uh, the ProWane, of course, comes with, with, with a very detailed manual which explains how to mount it properly, what, what the parts all do, and, and so on. Don't hesitate to contact him or don't hesitate to contact me, of course, or put something in the comments below if you want to uh, know something. Um, and uh, all that trip that I'm doing here, what I was talking uh, about before, so you will find uh, uh, shorts on YouTube. Uh, and of course, after this trip, I will uh, launch a, a bunch of, of cool videos showing the whole trip. So uh, be extra nice to the like button and uh, consider to subscribe uh, to my channel and see you uh, at uh, the second episode of my Wind Wayne explanation videos.